Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the Generative Music AI course. In the previous lecture, we saw the theory behind Markov Chains. Today is implementation time. We're going to be building a melody generator using a Markov Chain. Let's take a quick look at what we're going to be building more in detail. We're going to be mainly focusing on one class called Markov Chain Melody Generator. The type of encoding of our musical states is going to be quite straightforward. We're going to be considering both pitch and duration at the same time. We're going to be encoding them using a tuple where the first item is pitch represented as the pitch name, like for example E, and the octave, for example E5. The second item is going to be duration encoded as quarter note length duration. In this particular representation, one is equal to a quarter note, two is equal to a half note, you get the idea. We'll see two main methods here. One is called train, and of course, you guess it, we're going to be using this to learn the probabilities of the mark of chain directly from some corpus. And I want to tell you that the corpus is going to be extremely simple. Then we're going to have another method that's called generate. And of course, we're going to be using this to generate a melody, leveraging the mark of chain. Without any further ado, let's switch to code. Here you have our nice Python file with the implementation of the mark of chain melody generator class. In order to run this script, you need to install NumPy and Music21. Let's run the script first and see the result. And of course, the script uses the melody generator class in order to create a melody and it automatically runs MuseScore so that we can visualize the melody. Okay, let's listen to the result here and try to guess the training corpus that I've used for the Markov chain. Okay, I guess that you can guess that I've used Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, in particular the first phrase. Okay, now let's go back to code. As a first step, let's take a look at the main function so that you'll have a high level idea of what's going on in this script. First thing that we do is we create some training data and as I mentioned, this is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, that's all it is. We'll see this function later on. Then I create a, all the states that I want for my Markov chain and I pass them in the Markov chain melody generator constructor here and I get the model. Then I train the model. I do a model.train passing in the training data. So now the model is trained. Then I can use a model.generate passing in the number of notes that I want to generate and I'm going to get back a generated melody that then I can easily visualize through this simple function called visualize melody. Of course, I have Music21 connected with MuseScore and that's why MuseScore started when we run this script. Okay, so now let's take a look at the most important part of this script. That's, of course, the mark of chain melody generator. We have a lot of methods to go through, so let's get into it. Okay, so mark of chain melody generator, of course, represents a mark of chain model for melody generation. Let's take a look at the constructor first. So the constructor takes a state. State is basically a list of possible states, and that is pitch and duration. So each state is represented by a pitch and duration. We store the states in this uh, public attribute called states, obviously. And then, if you remember from the previous video, we need another couple of components for defining a mark of chain, and these are initial probabilities, and that's a vector, and the transition matrix. Okay, so for the initial probabilities, of course, we don't have 
the actual values there. So we need to create a placeholder vector. So we use NumPy and we use like this zeros function so that we can instantiate an array that has the size that's equal to the number of states. So for example, if we have uh, 10 states, this array is gonna have 10 items. We do the basic same thing uh, with transition metrics. So basically we create a, a matrix that has a dimensionality, number of states by number of states. So if you have 10 states, this matrix is gonna be 10 by 10. And of course, using this zeros function with NumPy, we're gonna fill that matrix with all zero values. Basically, we're just instantiating the initial probabilities vector and the transition matrix to a default value that's zero. We don't have a way of connecting the values in the initial probabilities and transition matrix with the states because at the end of the day, these are only numbers. So we need a way of connecting those. We don't have any key that connects a state with the relative probability. So we're, we're gonna create a private attribute called state indexes. This is gonna be a dictionary where uh, you are gonna have for each item, the key that is the state, it's basically a pair, a pitch duration pair, and the relative value is gonna be the associated index that you have in the initial probabilities and in the transition matrix. In this way, we are gonna be able to retrieve the value probability for a given state in the initial probabilities as well as into the transition matrices. Okay, so now that you know uh, how the constructor works, let's take a look at one of the two important main methods that we have here. And of course that is train. Train is a simple method that trains the model based on a list of nodes. So of course it takes notes as an argument and this notes is a list and in particular is a list of music 21 notes objects. I've decided to use this because uh, with a note object, it is very straightforward how you can get the duration and the pitch and it's very semantic. So I prefer using this rather than using a simple state where you have a pair with pitch duration as a tuple. Okay, how does train work? It's quite straightforward. We have a couple of private methods here. First, we calculate, we extract the initial probabilities from the nodes, and then we calculate the transition matrix. In other words, we extract the transition matrix from the nodes. Okay, of course, these are higher level Mm, methods and we need to dive into them to understand how they actually work. Let's see how we can calculate the initial probabilities. This method takes notes as a list of music 21 notes as an argument. We loop through all the notes one by one and at each iteration we increment the initial probability count of that particular note. Then once we're done with this, and so we have a count of all the notes in the initial probability uh, vector, then what we'll do is we just normalize that vector. So we normalize the initial probabilities. Okay, let's take a look at this method. So increment initial probability count. It takes a note as an argument, and then what it does, it extracts the state from the music 21 representation and in order to do that it, what it does it's quite straightforward so basically we instantiate a tuple where the first item is just the the pitch name with the relative octave and then we have note duration expressed as a quarter length duration okay so now we have the state in a way that's uh homogeneous with what we have for our states in mark of chain in our mark of chain then we take the item in the initial probabilities array that has the index that's the index connected with the state we're currently in how do we fetch that index well we have the state indexes dictionary for that 
So we take that item and we increase the count by one. Let's go back to the calculate initial probabilities. So we've seen how increment initial probability count works. Now let's take a look at how once we're done with the uh, increment process, how we can normalize the initial probabilities array. So I'm going to jump into this method. So what this method does, it, it normalizes the initial probabilities array so that the sum of all the probabilities equals to one. Okay, how does this work? First of all, we get the total value of instances that we have of notes, basically, of states that we get in our uh, training data. And in order to do that, we just sum over all the initial probabilities, we sum all the items in the vector, and we get a total number. And if we have a total number, and that is mm, different from zero, then what we do is we take the initial probabilities and we divide that by the total so that we're going to get, we're going to move from counts to probabilities. At that point, the sum of the overall vector is going to be equal to one. If total is equal to zero, we're going to just be applying this not a number to number function from the NumPy library. And we're going to be applying it to these initial probabilities just to be extra sure that we don't have not a numbers there. We can go up our stack once again, back here in training. So we saw how we calculate the initial probabilities. Now let's take a look at how we calculate the transition metrics. Okay, I'm gonna jump into this one. This method takes a notes argument. It loops through the notes until the penultimate one, really. And at each iteration, it applies this other private method. So we increment the transition count. This method is, it takes two arguments. It takes the, the current note and the subsequent note. And finally, once we go through all of these steps, we normalize the transition metrics. And this is very similar to what we did with the initial probabilities array. Let's take a look at this increment transition count. This is the method. As I said, it takes two notes, the current note and the next note. What it does is initially it takes like the, the current state and to do that it just like creates a tuple, instantiates a tuple with the current note page and the current note direct duration and it does the same thing for the next state, the subsequent note. Then it increments the count for that particular combination of current state and subsequent state. How can we do that? Well, that's quite straightforward because we know that in the transition matrix, each cell represents the probability of moving from one current state to the next state. So all we need to do is to find the right cell that we need to increment. And in order to do that, once again, we're gonna be using our old friend, the state indexes dictionary so that we can get the index of the current state, and that is gonna be the row index. And we're gonna get the, the, the index of the subsequent state, and that is gonna be the column index. So that we now have this cell identified and we can increment the count by one. If we go back to calculate transition matrix, so we see how we can do this process again and again through all the notes so that we increment the count in the transition matrix. Once we're done with that process, next we have to normalize the transition matrix. So we'll see how we can do that. This method is a little bit tricky because it uses a lot of tricks that come natively to NumPy. To make it extra clear, I've written a lot of comments here so that you can really understand what I'm doing at each point. But just to give you an overview at this point, the method normalizes each row of the transition matrix. So that's the sum of the probabilities for each row equals to one. Why is this important? Well, this is essential for 
the rows of the matrix to represent probability distributions of transitioning from one state to the next. We need for each row to add up to one because that is a probability distribution that we need to use when we'll jump from one state to all the other possible states. Okay, let's see how we achieve this normalization. So we calculate the sum of each row in the transition matrix. In order to do that, we just use this transition matrix dot sum and we sum over the first axis. So here we're gonna basically have one array where each item is the sum of all the values in each row. Now comes the trickier part. We're gonna be using a context manager called error state. We need to use this because there's the risk that we may be dividing by zero because some of those uh, row sums may be equal to zero. And if we want to normalize each row, we may be dividing by zero. And if that happens, of course, Python is gonna scream at us. In order to avoid that, we're gonna be using this context manager so that the, that error is not gonna be raised. Okay, so we are within this context manager. So now we need to actually do the normalization. How do we do that? Well, we use this where function, again, coming from NumPy. This function takes three different arguments. The first argument is a condition. We basically check the, the row's sum. We check whether this is equal to zero or not. If it's not equal to zero, so we are in a true case, we normalize by taking the matrix, the row of the matrix, and dividing it by the row sum for that particular row. By contrast, if the row sum is equal to zero, what we're gonna be doing is pass zero to the entire row. Next step, we want to backtrack to the train function. And so here we know how the train method actually works. We calculate the initial probabilities and we calculate the transition matrix. By now, we've trained our model. So the next step, instead of generating a melody, and we have a dedicated public method for that. This method takes a length argument, that's an int, and this is the length of the sequence to generate, how many notes we want in that particular melody. And of course, this method has a return, that is the melody, that's a list of tuples, and that's a list of generated states. Okay, how does this work? And here we are at a high level. Then, of course, we're gonna be looking at the implementation details. So, we generate a melody list, and we are gonna be instantiate this list with a single item, and we are gonna be instantiating the first item, the first note, or the first state of the list by using this generate starting state public uh, private method. Once we're done with this, we are gonna be looping here um, in order to arrive at the length that we want. And at each step, we are gonna generate a new note. And we're gonna, in particular, append a new state that gets generated with this private method. Generate next state. And of course, in order to generate the next state, we have to pass the last element that we have in the melody. That is basically the current state. Okay, we need to explore two methods here. Generate starting state and generate next state. We'll start from the starting state, obviously. Okay, how does this work? Well, this is quite straightforward because we want to generate or we want to choose an initial index. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we use this numpy.random.choice method and this one works like this. So basically here you have a list of things that you want to choose from, okay? And then you can pass 
a probability as a keyword argument where you have a probability value associated to each of the elements in the list. In other words, here we pass all the possible values, all the states as a list, and here we pass the initial probabilities as probabilities associated to those states. We get back a, an initial index. Now, this is just an index, it's not the actual state. We want to pass from index to state. How do we do that? For that, we are gonna take our states list and we're gonna pass the index so that we're gonna get back the actual state associated to the index that we've chosen. This is how you generate the starting state. We need to take a look at the second private method. That is generate next state. This one generates all the states but the first one. How does this work? Well, first it takes an argument called current state, and this is the current state in the Markov chain, of course. And of course it returns the next state in the Markov chain. Let's take a look at the logic here. So, first we have to check if the current state has a subsequent. We start by double checking that the current state has a subsequent state. Let's dive into this method to see how this works. Well, this is quite straightforward. In order to check that the current state has a possible subsequent state, we take the row that's associated to the current state in the transition matrix and then we sum all the items in the row, all the values, and basically we check whether that sum is equal to zero or is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, that's great because it means that there's at least another state there that we can transition in, but if that sum is equal to zero, it means that there's no probability of moving from the current state to any other state, so we can't just move there. We are at a dead end. Let's go back to our generate next state method. If the condition here is true, then we're going to jump here. And what we'll do is basically just generate the index for the subsequent state. We do this by using the same strategy that we've used to extract the index for the initial state in our melody. That is, we take numpy.random.choice, we pass the list of options that we have, and these are all the values associated in these state indexes, and then we pass another list that is the probability associated with all of these values. This time, of course, we need to take uh, this probability distribution from the transition matrix. In particular, we want to take that row of the transition matrix that's associated to the current state. So we're basically going to retrieve the index associated to the current state and then we are, are going to basically take the associated row out of it. That is our probability distribution for all the values. Now we're going to take an index and then of course we're going to return the state associated with that index as we did when we generated the initial state. If this condition is false, then of course we, we're not gonna be using the transition matrix because it doesn't make sense because there's no way of moving from one step from the current state to the next because there's no transition there. What we'll do is we're gonna rehash the generate starting state. We are at, de at a dead end, so what we'll do basically is we're gonna just use the generate starting state and we're gonna be assured that we're gonna get a new state no matter what. Okay, so now we know how generate next state works. So let's go back all the way here to generate. Yeah, it's here. Okay, so this was like quite the involved workflow, but I think like we are at the end of it. 
Okay, so let's just like restate how generate works. We have a melody, we generate the first state and then we generate all the next states and then we return the melody. That's gonna be a list of tuples where each tuple is our um, state encoding. That is a pitch with a note plus a duration in quarter length. Okay, I think that's it for the mark of chain melody generator. So now we can go back to the main here. Okay, now let's reanalyze the main function, but with a lot of awareness about like how the main class of this script actually works. So first of all, we need uh, some training data. And I mentioned already that we have used twinkle twinkle little star for this. So I'm gonna jump into this script tra tra training data. Yeah. It's super straightforward here. So we're basically just gonna return a list of music 21 note objects. And here I'm just encoding the twinkle twinkle little star melody. It's just the first phrase really, okay? Good. Okay, then we'll move back here. I create a list of states here. We use all the notes from Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The pitch is here with two durations. One is a quarter note and another one is a half note. Okay, so now we create the melody. So we instantiate the Mark of the Chain Melody Generator class passing the states and then we call a model.train passing training data, and these are the twinkle twinkle little star notes. So now we have a trained model. We can do a model.generate, and we generate, uh, we have a generated melody as an output. And finally, we can visualize the melody. Let me jump in this function super quick. We covered a similar function in the previous code tutorial, so I'm not gonna get into the details here, but from a very high level, I'm gonna just print the melody as a list of pitch duration pairs so that you can see it in the console. And then I'm just gonna create a Music21 score apart for it and transfer basically all of those uh, pitch duration encoding into Music21 notes so that we can then visualize it in MuseScore. And I do that by doing this score.show it works because I have Music21 connected to MuseScore. You probably have to tinker a little bit in order to get that, because at least for me on Linux, it doesn't come natural. You have to put like some settings there. Okay, you folks, that was it for the code walkthrough. I'll leave you the GitHub repo so you can fetch the code in the description box below. Before you go, I just want to invite you to explore with this code so that you can really understand it and make it your own. In particular, I want to suggest you some variations you can apply to this code to make it your own. First, and probably the, the easiest thing that you can do is just tinker probabilities manually and see how the code, the mark of chain is going to respond. You can also change the states and decide to play around with it. Then another thing you can do is to train on a proper melody dataset, not just twinkle twinkle little star. That is a great way of seeing how this mark of chains actually work when trained on more data. Then another thing is to perhaps have different state encodings. Perhaps you may want to add dynamics or articulations or different things, if you will. Just play around with it and get a feeling of how the mark of chain responds. Another very interesting but more involved exploration would be that of taking this code and basically doubling it so that you'll have one mark of chain that works for pitch duration generation, that is what we've just implemented today, but also having a sister mark of chain that you have there for implementing dynamics so that the overall generation could go through these two chains in parallel. You're gonna get a melody with pitch, duration, but also dynamics. 
Finally, I suggest you to change the particular compositional use case. In today's video, we use the markup chain to generate a melody, but why not use a markup chain to generate a chord progression, for example? Next time, we're gonna be diving into another fascinating algorithm that has been extensively used for music generation. That is cellular automata. If you've liked this tutorial, please remember to leave a like. If you're not a subscriber of the Sound of AI channel, please subscribe. It costs you nothing and it helps me a lot. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Take care.